Okay, let's look at the journal entries required to be used under a process costing system. Now they're quite similar to a job order costing system, except for that the manufacturing costs, our direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead are going to be assigned to processing departments rather than to jobs. So remember, we we will have more than one work in process account, which will be for each and every process in the in the manufacturing. Now at the end of the month then we have to make a journal entry to transfer the cost into the next processing department. So here to begin, here's how we take costs out of raw materials or and move them into work in process inventory. So our work in process inventory is an asset is going to go up here and our raw materials inventory will go down. So that's going to record our direct materials used. Now in the second step, our labor time records show that $21,250 of direct labor was used in the department during October. So if that is the case, we will record that direct, direct labor um, and add that to our work in process inventory and we will credit our liability account, in this case wages payable. So both of these accounts are going to go up, work in process asset, wages payable is a liability. Now, uh, manufacturing overhead is also allocated to the shaping department using the company's predetermined overhead rates. So just as in a job costing system, the company can use a single plant-wide rate or departmental rates or activity-based costing to allocate its manufacturing overhead. So let's say in this particular department that the overhead rate is $50 per machine hour and the department uses 935 machine hours. Multiply those two together we get 46,750 debit work in process for the overhead and we will credit manufacturing overhead so we're taking it out of this manufacturing overhead and moving it into the work in process for the shaping department now from the previous entries the T account for work in process would look like this so we had um, in this case a zero balance we added direct materials of 140,000 direct labor of 21,250 and manufacturing overhead of 46,750 so if we add all those together we get 208,000 now by performing the five step process we were able to determine how much of the 208,000 should be assigned to the units still being worked on which is 32,000 and how much should be assigned to the units completed and transferred out to the next department which was 176. So the company uses this information to make this journal entry. We credit the work in process inventory shaping that's going to take it those costs out of our shaping and move them into the next step which is the work in process inventory insertion. Now as we continue through multiple departments in the process we're going to use that five step process costing procedure that we use um, to determine equivalent units with one major difference. So we need to consider the costs transferred in to Department 2 from Department 1 when we're calculating equivalent units and the cost per equivalent unit. So transferred in costs are incurred in a previous process and carried forward as part of the product's cost when it moves into the next process. And we saw that with the journal entry that we just had. So we will continue to repeat that journal entry over and over until the process is complete at which time those costs flow into finished goods inventory and then ultimately out of finished goods and into cost of goods sold.